What's up everyone? I'm your female otaku and I'm here to give you my first impressions on Sakura Quest. Now I wasn't planning on watching this anime. I mean at first I was because I was just so like, okay, why is everyone talking about this anime? For the past couple of months, even though it's an anime original, we barely know what this shit's about. So then I read the description and I'm just so like... It's a slice of life about a tourism industry? Really? That sounds so boring. So then I was like, okay, no, fuck this shit. I'm not gonna watch it. But I decided to give it a chance. Why not? I was still waiting for Sagara to reset and for uh, uh, Biso Shoujo to come out. So I'm like, okay, I have time. Why not check it out? So I watched the first episode and I am pleasantly surprised. That was a great first episode. You see, when it comes to slice of life anime, I look for two things. Either charm or some sort of substance. And if it has both, that's great. For example, last season we had Demichon. That had both t uh, charm and substance. Sometimes slice of life just has charm. Like for last year, I remember last year in the spring 2016 season, we had Flying Witch. Didn't have much substance because there wasn't really a story going on, but it had a lot of charm. So I watched it weekly and it was very relaxing. So with this Sakura quest, it has so much charm. That was just a great first episode. I love the characters and the atmosphere. The OST really did it for me. As soon as the opening song played, I was just like, okay, that's my second favorite opening thus far, right behind Wild Salesman. Like, honestly, that was, that was a great opening. I love those openings where it's like, yeah, we're gonna start our day. Let's do this. We're gonna have a great day, guys. Woo! Like, it, it, it sounded really nice. I, I enjoyed it. The ending was also really nice, too. And just a bunch of tracks that played throughout the episode. I fell in love with. And as for the characters, they have so much life to them, but they're not completely ridiculous to make it so that it's like a comedy. Because this happens a lot. Slice of life comedies are quite prevalent, and to be a slice of life comedy, some sort of realism or relatability in the mix there, but the characters are extremely zany and out of this world. Sure, we do have some quirky characters, and quirky characters are realistic. And they weren't like so bizarre to ruin the entire tone of the series. So I really like the balance between the oddness of some of the characters while also keeping a realistic atmosphere. We have our main character, Koharu, and Koharu is trying to get a job. She's gonna graduate college soon. Her parents are gonna cut her off from her allowance and she has been down on her luck when it came to getting a job and she's had this dream ever since she was little that she was in a coronation and was crowned queen and turns out that wasn't really a dream you see she gets hired by this one job this tourism bureau and she is the queen of this uh this place where she gets to run the tourism industry and they haven't had a queen in a very long time a leader to help bring life back into the town so that more people can come and visit but Koharu doesn't want to be out in a rural area and I understand I don't really like rural areas I've been to rural areas before when I have to like visit family and stuff like over in Ohio or in Pennsylvania or even some parts of New Jersey can be pretty rural and I've also been to Tennessee like I don't I don't like those places I really don't all good if you live there and if you like living there just for me it's not for me okay now nah, I like living in suburbia while also being 20 minutes away from the city that's the kind of life for me but she ends up getting sucked into this contract to where she has to work at this place for an entire year but she's okay with it now because in the end it turns out that her dream wasn't a dream and that she was in this place long ago the place that made her have that amazing dream was this little rural town. So hopefully Koharu can bring this town back up on its feet once again. The comedy throughout this episode was fantastic. I love the old man. That dude was a freaking boss. And also this was the best part out of the entire episode when we had the old man dress up as, well, what do they call it? A Chupa Kabara? I think that's what it's called, Chupa Kabara? And he was like attacking uh, Shiori. <laughs> oh my god. And then Kohori just looks and she's just like, what the fuck? And Shiori's just like, if you want to defeat the Chupa Kabara, you gotta, you gotta take out the sword from the stone and slay it like the legends. And then Kohori's just looking at them like, fuck that shit. <laughs> she cracks up with her purse. I 
laugh so much throughout the episode. Like when Koharu went on the bus and we suddenly see this random dude in the back in like a cloak and a guitar. And we're just like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Oh my god, that was fantastic. Lots of charm, great atmosphere. I will definitely be sticking with this anime. And I know a lot of people were excited about this anime because it's a part of like PA Works working franchise as they call it. Basically in the same realm as Shirobako, which I never finished Shirobako. I was I got like two to three episodes in and then I got hooked on a Chihaya Furu and now I'm hooked on Gintama. So yeah, that's kind of how things are going with that. But let me know if you enjoyed Sakura Quest or not. Are you going to continue watching it? Are you going to uh, save it for later? I understand a lot of people like to do that with slice of life anime. Makes sense watching a slice, a slice of life anime in one go is rather chillaxing. I'm not too sure if I'm going to be reviewing this anime weekly. It depends how much substance there is with the whole uh, problems when it comes to Koharu working in the Tourism Bureau, so we'll have to see where it goes, but if you don't see a review out next week, that doesn't mean I dropped it, it just means that I don't have enough to say to review it, but I will definitely continue watching it on the side, so make sure you follow me on Twitter and look out for my tweets on this series every single week. And catch me later as I review Sakurada Reset. I'm your female otaku, Sayonara.